Hi everyone, welcome back. This is the 12th video in our series on building a chess engine from scratch in the Java programming language. Uh, we are <clears throat> focused right now on the legal move calculation uh, of a pawn. And in the prior pawn videos, we went over the basics of calculating the legal move for a non-attacking pawn move and a pawn jump, right? So if I bring up my Wikipedia entry here for the chess pawn, um, you know, the sort of the, the pawn jump uh, ha happens. It's a special case where the pawn has not moved yet and it's on its uh, initial row. And you can jump two tiles uh, once if um, you know the n neither tile is occupied, and we co uh, covered that in a prior video, and also the normal pawn move here, shown here, uh, where we have this pawn on c4 moving to c5. Uh, if the if if c5 is not occupied, either by a friendly or enemy piece, we can move there. Um, and I also pointed out that uh, we were going to cover the pawn promotion and special pawn move known as en passant, um, you know, in subsequent videos. Uh, this video is focused on the attack move for a pawn, okay? So we're going to talk about uh, when a pawn, a, a, a pawn attacks on its diagonals, um, and we were, we're going to look closely at how we can... Uh, model that uh, and what the edge cases are there um, and right so I think that's about it we'll, we'll jump right into it now one last thing I want to say is that a lot of the magic happens when you want to execute a move and we haven't really talked about that yet right so if we were to look at our move class we um, we haven't really defined, we've only defined two subclasses, right, a major move and an attack move. We're going to have actually a lot of subclasses here um, and that are going to do the specific type of move. They're going to execute the specific type, type of move. And um, we're, we're also missing the execute method. Um, and we'll see what the signature on that looks like. And that's going to answer a lot of questions that you might have surrounding um, what we're doing so far. So. Uh, let's jump right into it here. Uh, we have, so this if clause really handles the non-attacking pawn move. This one handles the, uh, um, the pawn jump, right? And so now we want to say else if. And let's cover the uh, case where the current candidate offset is equal to 7. That's going to be one attack, and else if current candidate offset is equal to nine, right? So let's go ahead and add those in here into our array, and you can put them in any order that you want. It doesn't really matter. So let's just do that. Um, right, so, okay. Okay, so here, let's, there is one edge case that we need to cover here. Um, so let's bring up the Wikipedia entry. If I am a white pawn and I am on the first column, okay, then I can't really attack in the direction of my the left hand side, right? Obviously, and if I'm, uh, but if I'm a black pawn, I can because notice we we sort of rotate 180 degrees, and I'd be going that way. Uh, I think that's right. So let's see: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh no, that's not quite right. Eight, nine, nine. I can attack in that direction. So if I'm if I'm white and I'm on the eighth column, or if I'm black and I'm on the first column, then that's not gonna work out, right? So like, let's say I'm black here, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That doesn't work. Okay, that's correct. But nine does. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that works out now. But if I'm white and we are uh, looking to attack in the seven direction, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven doesn't work. But nine. Nine does work. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, that works. So let's see if we can codify this, and we will go ahead and explain it here. Um, so let's get some space for this condition, and let's put this condition in a put this condition here in a paren. So if the board utils dot eighth column piece position dot piece position. If your if the piece position's on the eighth column and Alliance is white, right? And actually, you know what? One thing that I want to improve upon here is if I have access to a member field, I'm not going to go through its method. So I'm just going to say this dot piece alliance, and I do have access to that. Um, I think I did that here too, right? So this dot, just a minor cleanup. Okay, so let's see. I think that's going to be an and. Right, so if you are going in the seven direction and you are, um, you're not on the eighth column and white or And let's make another. Oops. Board utils dot first column right. And let's put that's there. And we want one parenthesis to capture both of these. Oops. Did I not get that right? Let's see, hold on, I'm going to undo this. Okay, here we go. Let's try this one more time here. That condition. Let's get rid of that there and put that here. Right? That looks correct. So board utils, first column or, and we want to put all of that wrap all of that and say not. Okay, I have some explaining to do here. Um, right, so what we were saying here, let's put this up, is that when you are on the eighth column and you're white, then the seven rule doesn't work, right? So if we were to um, try to attack in the seven direction, we would go one, two. Remember, remember white piece. What the white direction is upwards. So in this case, we're we're trying to um, we are trying to we're moving towards smaller tile IDs. So we're trying to subtract seven. So we'd say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops, that doesn't quite work. But eight, nine does work, right? And if you're black here and on the first column, right, trying to 
uh, so, so here, let's say, for example, this is easy to see, and you're trying to attack, let's say, for example, um, in, the, in the 7 direction here, you would say add 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, oops, that doesn't work, but 8, 9 would if there were a pawn here. Okay, so that's what we've codified here. What we're saying here is that if you are moving in the 7 direction and you are not falling into one of these exceptional conditions, right, that I've captured here, then now we can come into this uh, if clause and um, perform more checks, right? So we, we will say, let's get the piece candidate. Um, so let's say, well, first let's say if, this is going to look similar to uh, code that we've written before, if dot get tile candidate destination coordinate is occupied right and let's get that piece 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 on piece on candidate is equal to board dot get tile candidate destination coordinate dot get that piece okay and if this dot piece alliance is not equal to the piece on candidates get piece alliance now we know here in this situation we can um, add an attack move right so I'm just gonna stub it out remember I said I was gonna come back to this code um, put to do more to do here um, and I and and really what we just need to handle here is the um, case where we're attacking into a pawn promotion. So I won't I won't show that here, but that's what we would be having to deal with. Okay, and uh, yeah. So now let's see if we can capture the scenario where we are the the exception case where we are our candidate offset is nine. Okay, so let's bring up our chessboard here and see if we can reason through it. Um, if the candidate offset is 9 and you are white and you're on the first column, I think that rule breaks down. So let's see. So if you're here, right, <clears throat> you are going upwards, so you want to... Uh, subtract 9, right? So you'd say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that does not work, right? That's pretty clear that it doesn't, that that rule falls apart. And if you are black and you're on the 8th column, I think the rule falls apart. So let's say you're here and you add, remember because of the directionality, you add 9, you'd go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that would not work out, obviously, right? So if I had that, again, let's do that one more time. I have a, pretend I have a, a black pawn on H6, and I add 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Well, that doesn't really correspond to any legal move uh, for a pawn on h6. So that those are, we. I think we just captured our two uh, exception criteria. So let's say and, and you know what I'm going to do here is to make things, hopefully make things easier, I'm going to try to copy and paste this giant condition and modify it to suit my needs. So, um, it's going to be that I'm on the first column, right? I said that I was going to be that I was on the first column and I'm white. Or, if I'm on the eighth column and I'm black, right? 
So that looks right, actually. Okay, and the rest of this code is exactly the same. Okay, and yeah, that is it. We're getting close here to getting to what I would call sort of a critical mass where we could write some really meaningful unit tests. Um, I could be developing these unit tests along, you know, having more sort of granular unit tests, but that would make this series very long. Um, so I've, I've, I've chosen to get us to a point where we're actually building boards and um, putting pieces on those boards and um, testing conditions on the board. That's what I want to, that's what our tests are going to focus on. Um, so this is the skeletal structure for a pawn is coming uh, together uh, really nicely here. So let's see if we can do some real quick cleanup. Let's say immutable copy. Uh, no, immutable list. Dot copy of our legal moves. And as I pointed out before, we still have a little bit of work to do uh, for the en passants and pawn promotions. Um, we'll come back to do those. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll do in the next video, we'll do some cleanup. We'll flesh out the particular type of pawn moves. Um, and uh, we will go from there. Okay, thanks everyone.